Mr. Rocky Jockey, okay. Thank you, Damien Memory, I'll take you to the bell. Great side position, Dr. B. Lane. Welcome, Adam Wilcock Fight Card Promotions. Australian Fight Series, the biggest night Adam's put on in Melbourne. In I'm fact, for Australia. Saturday Night Fights, September 24, 2012. It's Not World Championship yet. time. WIBA Women's yeah. Super Featherweight Championship yeah. of the World. From like Canada, like defending guy. champion, Lethal Lindsay Carbat against Australian challenger, taking all before her, Lady Di Praza. That's all part of a triple header. Also, an IBO, International Boxing Organization, Asia Pacific Welterweight Championship, supervisor for that bout, Stephen Marshall. Brings together Ravan All Hails is there from Sunshine Victoria against North Fitzroy's Boxing Fit 1300 Hot Shot Victorian Welterweight Champion, the Hunter, Tim Hunt. That's part of a big deal here tonight in Altona. Let's get rolling. International Cruiserweight Boxing, six by three minutes. Your judge is assigned by the Professional Boxing and Combat Sports Board of Victoria. The Hebrew Hustler, Henry Nissen. Brian Memory and Chris Anderson Sr. When the bell told you, man in charge of the action, Tony Moretta. Here we go, introducing on my right in the blue corner, born in Samoa, South Pacific, now resident, Madurina, New Zealand. Ladies and gentlemen, in September 2009, he came to Melbourne and blew away, brought Melbourne's Kerry Palmer. 24 professional fights, ladies and gentlemen. Tipping the scales at 80.4, zero kilograms. Wearing Collingwood magpie colours, black and white. Would you welcome Holy Moopses, I Ulu. And across the ring with Charlie Liberata and a giant team of 10 in the corner, including Serge Yannick from Spotswood, Melbourne's West. Va Townsville, Queensland. Ladies and gentlemen, the same weight and his opponent at 80.40 kilograms. Gold trunks with a touch of black, red. Ladies and gentlemen, 24 fights, 13 wins, 8 losses, 3 draws, 8 by knockout. Title belts include WBA, Pampa, Light Heavyweight Championship, WBF, WBO, Asia Pacific, Light Heavyweight Championships. Would you welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Iron Show Two Guns Casey. Thank you for any memory. Here we go. Open bout for the big gun of boxing. Go. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to Grand Star Reception's Altona North and Adam Wilcock promotion. Troy Zantuck in commentary alongside four-time promoter of the year in Victoria and host of Channel 31 KO Boxing Show, Peter Maniatis. Great to have you on board. What a night it is going to be. Good to be on board, Troy, and this is the final night of the fighter series, so it's going to be a big night, mate. But uh, Joel Casey and Moses Orell are right in front front of us this will be an interesting matchup. Our first fight for the night is Joel Casey up against Moses Iulu. Casey the Victorian up against Iulu the New Zealander. This is six rounds of cruiserweight action. Joel Casey 24 fights, 13 wins, 8 by way of knockout, 8 losses and 3 draws. The regaining PABA champion too, Troy, at light heavyweight level. Comes in with some tremendous form, Pete. Three wins on the trot. Tim Bell, Kashiv Mumtaz, and his latest victim was Congrit Nanakorn. So, Joel Casey on a three-fight winning streak. No doubt about it. When Joel Casey's in the ring, it's entertainment plus. No, no holding, no holding, Joel. No from New Zealand. Five foot nine and a half. Manarua, New Zealand. Quite a deceiving record, Earl. Like like he's, he's quite durable. Troy, he's got plenty of power. Yes, Peter, three wins, uh, 21 losses, and uh, 24 fights. So, as you said, he's very durable. No doubt about it. 
for the viewers at home. Iolu in the black and white trunks. Joel Casey in the Las Vegas gold with the red stars emblazoned on his trunks. Both fighters just sizing each other up at the moment, Peter. They are. It's a, it's a look, Casey's been pretty busy this first round. Troy's landed some nice crisp body punches and he's moving around and been the southpaw, giving him the angles that he needs to do. And uh, he's actually got a welt across uh, the left cheekbone of, of Iolu too, so he must have landed a nice shot. Fight out of it, fight out of it. Interesting to no note, holding. eight KOs Break. on the 13 wins of Joel Casey, so he's certainly got some punching power in both those hands. Casey, of course, uh, as we know, he beat Tim Bell, and that was a big win for all you commentated that. What, what can you tell us about that night? One of the best fights I've ever seen. Joel Casey and Tim Bell went hell for leather. No doubt about it. It was a split decision over 12 rounds, and it had the crowd on their feet. Nice right hand there from Mosulu. Ayalu tagging Joel Casey with a right hand. Fight! The back. First fight to start our night of fight, the Australian Fight Series Grand Stop. Final. Well How did you see the first round, Peter? I thought Casey was a bit busy and a bit classy there, Troy. First of six, cruiserweight action coming to you from Grand Star Receptions, Altona North. Thank you. Thank you. Wait. Cruiserweight action coming what? to you from Grand Star Receptions, Altona North. The second round of a Joel Casey up against Holy Moses Iolu from New Zealand. Iolu's come out a bit busier this round, Troy. He certainly has. He's uh, put the foot on the pedal, has Moses. He needs to get busy against a fighter like Joel Casey. Casey likes to come in through the front door and a magnificent left hand body punch there to the solar plexus. Ayala with a slapping right hand. Casey goes to the to the bread basket, then the temple of Ayalu. Catching Ayalu with some nice uppercuts too inside there. No holding, it's a signature no punch, isn't it, for Casey, Pete? The uh, the uppercut when he connects, it's uh, it's an absolute tremendous weapon in his arsenal. As he tags oh, Iola with a beautiful Go left hook. Keep your hands up. Watch the head, boys. Watch the head. Iola goading Casey, saying, "Hey, you have to be harder than that." He is, and he, he comes back, Oulu, bravely, Troy. But you can't let your opponent have a free shot like that. Absolutely right, right Pete. Step back. Both fighters break. A tremendous crowd in tonight at the uh, Grand Star Reception. Altona North, wonderful crowd. The Australian Fight Series Grand Final. Also the WIBA. Super featherweight world title, Di Prazak up against Lindsay Garbutt from Canada. And our main event, the kickboxing, the Iron Lion, George Longanides up against Lakawa from Thailand. Moses now having some moments here, Troy. Lots of pushing. Yep. Some nice body punching there by Joel Casey. Right, step back, boys. Some step big back. body shots here from Casey, Troy. Casey looking to land his fourth win on the trot. He's come in with some very, very good form as Joel Casey. Joel Two Guns Casey. Oh, nice uppercut there from Iolu, but Casey wore it pretty well. He's got a good chin, Joel Casey, too, hasn't he? Absolutely. I've seen Joel take some heavy hits on the chin, and he just keeps coming back. Origin. Originally from Townsville. What a good round, come on. Great round two, Joel Casey. The busier fighter. The busier fighter, Troy, for mine. 
Thank you, 19 seconds out, so round three. Watch the corner, please. Court, watch the corner, please. Round three action, Joel Casey up against Holy Moses Iulu in cruiserweight action. And Iulu's come out all guns blazing and he's cut Casey across the uh, eyebrow too, Troy. He's come out with bad intentions, has Holy Moses Iulu. Oh, Step big back. cut across John Stop. Casey. Stop time! You can corner. You can Moses mid corner. Doctor. Third man in the ring, our referee Tony Moretta. Actioning to the doctor to have a look at that cut on Joel Casey. And he's been waved on. Both fuck. Both boxers resuming hostilities as Iulu comes out. Like a bull at a gate. Nice left hand I'm uppercut holding, there I'm by holding. Casey. Break. Break. Step back. Is it a first fight here? Very entertaining, Peter Maniatis. It certainly is, Troy. Casey cut, so it's opened up the fight Keep here up. for Keep Iulu. Up. Up Come on, fight out of no doubt. Holy Moses, Iulu will be targeting that cut from Joel Casey. Break. Get back. Come on. You're right. Iulu. You're right. Seems to be in a bit right. of trouble. Time. Time out called right. by Tony Moretta. Okay? Iulu's okay. trainer. No more. Having a look. No more. No more. No more. No more. Iulu's hurt his hands. It's been called no off. No more. No more. Moses Iulu in a distressed state. As so, Joel Casey is uh, wins that by TKO, he declared the winner. Yeah. Well, a controversial finish to our first fight, Peter Maniard. A retirement there from most. Uh, looks like he dislocated his elbow, Troy, or shoulder. Which is a shame because he was showing some uh, tremendous qualities in, uh, in those first three rounds. He was. Joel Casey takes it to four wins on the trot now. 14 wins, nine by way of KO and Joel Casey. Congratulations, and he kicks off our first night. Our first fight of the night. Grand Star Receptions, El Turn and All is the place to be. We'll be back with fight two after this. Well, I must guess their uh, affection, and of course it's a, a tradition of the South Pacific people. Okay, referee Tony Moreno's tough contest, 1 minute 15 seconds, in a round 3, your winner, Joel Tucans Casey. Well, Troy, Joel Casey gets through. Continues his great form. That is four on the trot for two guns, Joel Casey. And you'd have to say that his, his corner would be very happy uh, after that cut opening up. Serious cut opening up. So, uh, Joel Casey, congratulations.
refereeing this international contest in the United States of America versus New Zealand. Chris Anderson Senior, judges Tony Moreira, Brian Lindley, Henry Nissen, time to the bell. David Memory, ringside position, Dr. Peter Lange. Here we go, six rounds of women's lightweight international boxing. Would you welcome to the blue corner from Auckland, New Zealand, chief corner person, Monica Tai, her sister. 10 professional fights, 60.80 kilograms, wearing, well, maybe black, and white trunks. One of nine boxing, kickboxing, members of the Thai family. When you want to miss Christina Thai, New Zealand. And the grass are ring in the red corner. Raised in Puerto Rico. Then for a time, she was a resident of the Bronx, New York, USA. Now domicile Miami, Florida. 20 bouts, 15 wins, two losses, three draws, five in side the distance. She has fought in Canada, USA, Panama. She's held four women's world championships, including Global Boxing Union, WIBA, at super bantamweight, super featherweight, and lightweight. 60 kilograms, even her weight, Fondly known as the Hurricane, she's a personality plus lady, black and gold, Melissa Hernandez. She's almost an Aussie resident, working out with Nick Hargraves and the team at Boxing Fit 1300. Christina Tai and the Hurricane, your referee in charge, Chris Anderson. Here we go. Welcome to Fight Fans all around Australia. It's our second fight of the night, the Australian Fight Series Grand Final Fight Night coming to you from Grand Star Receptions, Altona North, a fight card promotion brought to you by Adam Wilcock, and this promises to be an absolute rip snorter. Personality plus Melissa Hernandez from the USA, up against Christina Tai from New Zealand. Peter Maniatis in commentary, joining me, four-time Victorian Promoter of the Year. This will be an interesting matchup, Troy. Melissa Hernandez from the Bronx, New York. They bring in out of the Bronx, don't they? Absolutely. Now residing in Miami, Florida. A lovely part of America is Miami, Florida. Beautiful beaches, beautiful water. And Melissa Hernandez is domiciled there now. Originally from Puerto Rico, 31 years of age. For the viewers at home, Melissa Hernandez in the black gladiator trunks with the gold piping. Christina Tai, the black trunks with the silver flash on the side. Christina Tai, Troy, Puerto Rican heritage, which she reminds me a lot of Hector Macho. Melissa, Melissa Hernandez. Hernandez. She reminds me a lot of Hector Camacho. Yep. She, uh, she's got that Puerto Rican style fight and she... Uh, Got the flashy shorts like Camacho as well, but uh, she's got all the moves, mate. And she came up to me actually at the Boxing Fit gym and said she loves our commentating. She heard us commentating Di Prazak's fights. Fantastic. And she's really unloading in this first round some beautiful left-hand, right-hand combinations from the Miami resident, Melissa Hernandez, going to school on Ty. Ty's boxed into a corner. Coming out all guns blazing is Melissa Hernandez, and her entrance into the ring was something to behold. To the strains of Michael Jackson and doing a bit of fancy dancing herself. She's quite the entertainer, Troy, and pokes her tongue out, and looks like she's having fun in there, which is good to see. Absolutely, Peter, coming in too with a very uh, awesome, well, an awesome record is Melinda Hernandez. 20 fights, 15 wins, five by a KO, only the two losses and three draws. And she was brought out here by Mick Hargraves and all the boys at Boxing Fit Gym to beat Di Prazak sparring partner. Tremendous first round by Hernandez. Showing the appreciative crowd at the Alterna North Grand Star receptions all the weapons in her arsenal. Round two action. Coming to you from the Grand Star receptions, Alterna North. The combatants, Melissa Hernandez up against Christina Ty, the New Zealander. Christina Tai, 35 years of age. Hernandez, 31 years of age. 
She shows a lot of skill, does Melissa Hernandez. Certainly does, Troy, and a lot of energy and a lot of bounce. It's good to see, isn't it? Absolutely, Peter. She threw more combinations in that first round than a Chinese menu, did Melissa Hernandez. A ball of energy. As she tags Ty with a nice right hand, going to the body with the left uppercut. Ty's pretty resilient though, Troy. She keeps fighting back, doesn't she? Christina Ty, let's go over her record. Lost a majority decision against Sarah Howlett. Lost the unanimous decision against Laura Eagle. Fought Erin McGowan, went the whole distance with Erin McGowan. She's quite durable. Absolutely spot on there, Pete. She's been in the ring with some of the best women fighters, as Christina Ty. But now we see Hernandez unloading. Magnificent right hand there, made connection to Ty. Right back, right back. There you go. There you go. Third man in the ring, Chris Anderson, our referee for this bout. Point off there, Chris Anderson's called a point off for holding Troy. One of the most experienced referees in Australia is Chris Anderson. Christina Ty from the Fighting Ty family in New Zealand, Troy. They bred them tough out in New Zealand, Wayne. Absolutely, Peter. West Auckland, and she told me she's a truck driver, Christina Ty. So um, she's not driving trucks tonight, but she's basically got a little mini truck in front of her in Melissa Hernandez. Well, she might run into a semi trailer in Hernandez because Hernandez just keeps coming forward. She likes to knock on the door. She likes to come through the front door. Does Melissa Hernandez in a great second round there. I'd have to give that to Hernandez, Pete. Well, with a point off, it makes it a 10-8 round, Troy. Round, round three action. Hope you're enjoying this at home. Melissa Hernandez in the Gladiator Black Trunks up against Christina Ty, the Black with the silver piping. I'm joined by Peter Maniatis, host of Channel 31 KO Boxing Show. Pete, how have you seen the first two? We've seen a classy performance by Melissa Hernandez, haven't we, Troy? Now we know why she's won all those world titles. A magnificent the right hand there. Tag Ty, the head rock back. But Ty said, give me more. The resilience of Ty. The truck driver from West Auckland, she is tough. It comes from a fighting family, Troy. All her brothers are kick boxes and boxes. So she would have been she would have been pretty tough in her day. Absolutely. The ground up. the grounding there and the uh, the tutelage from the Thai the the clan, no doubt. A Maori descent. They breed them tough as we mentioned, Troy, in New Zealand. But Melissa Hernandez. Has put on a boxing clinic here, a lot of great angles, peppering, and uh, really good performance. And it, this it should keep actually talking about Di Prazak before in good stead because to be getting this type of sparring, Di Prazak must be cherry ripe for tonight up against Lindsay Garber Troy. Yeah, looking forward to that one a bit later on in the night. Very impressed with the hand speed of Hernandez, Peter, and the evasive skills, ducking under a lot of those overhand rights by Ty. And as we see, Hernandez working hard to the body too, Troy. And Hernandez in a tremendous camp, the boxing fit organisation headed up by Mick Hargraves. And isn't he having a great time of it with uh, his fighters at the moment? Tim Hunt featured tonight in the main event. Oh, Hernandez putting on a clinic for the appreciative crowd at the Grand Star receptions. Altona North, they're loving it. Round four, six rounds scheduled in this lightweight women's epic bout. It's a tremendous bout. We've got the resilience of Christina Ty up against the fast hands and the evasive skills of Melissa Hernandez from Miami, Florida. A truly international bout here brought to you by Fight Card Promotions, Troy. Tremendous work, Adam Wilcock. Doing some great work with his promotion company, Fight Card Promotions. 
Hernandez now starting to load up, Troy. Left rips, overhand rights. Magnificent jabs. This could be all over, Troy. Hernandez is starting to cut loose. Ty under sustained punishment. Absolutely the caught referee's me right the He's got a stop it. has stopped this fight. And Melissa Hernandez, what a performance. Has made a statement here, Troy. Her Australian debut, and she has put on an absolute clinic. At the grand receptions in Altona North and they are loving it. The Grand Star receptions, Altona North is a place to be as Melissa Hernandez plies her trade with an emphatic win over the New Zealander, the resilient Christina Ty. We're going to talk to referee Chris Anderson. Chris, you stopped the contest. You thought Christina was under pressure. Yes, so Okay, ladies and gentlemen, 54 seconds into round four. We congratulate the winner, the Hurricane, Melissa Hernandez. Our third bout of the night, the Australian Fight Series Grand Final Night, and it's turning out to be an absolute rip snorter, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you're enjoying watching this boxing action around Australia. It is the Fight Card Promotions, Adam Wilcock. Place to be his Grand Star Receptions, Altona North. Troy Zantuck in commentary alongside four-time Victorian Promoter of the Year, Peter Matiatis. And our third fight sees Matt Lakemaninko 
the Victorian up against that Queenslander, no, Lee Henry no. Garup. Garup brings in a one win, one loss fight record. Matt Blakewinenko, the Victorian, four wins to IKO, no losses and two draws. So the undefeated Blakewinenko up against Garap. The viewers at home, Blakewinenko in the black with the white piping, Garap the black with the silver piping. Looks like it could be a pretty heated contest, Troy. Absolutely, Light Twink. Oh, he's been in very good form of late. Has been putting up his undefeated record here tonight. He's four and zip with a couple of draws, and those draws are up against Terry Ceramanis. So he's been up against some very good quality opposition. Has, Has Matthew Light Twink. Go. He's got heavy hands. The uh, the fights that I've seen him in. He has tried and he's improved. He's uh, got good head movement, he punches well to the body and he he, uh, he works up well upstairs as well. Yeah, good point, Pete. Uh, what's impressed me seeing him fight is his lateral movement and his hand speed is very, very good. We saw him here knock out an uh, interstate opponent with a left hook and he was out for quite a while. And good thing I like about the Twinko, he, uh, he finishes his work upstairs quite well after he bangs away to the body. And that's a... Uh, that's a nucleus of a good fighter when you can do that. And uses that jab too to great effect, does like when it go. Wow, there goes a big right hand, and Garap is in trouble. Oh, oh. Left, hook, left hook, hook there. And that's the same left hook we saw him land here at the star reception a few months ago. I don't think his opponent's getting up. The right hand set it up, and it was the left hook that did the damage. Good night, Irene Troy. Round one knockout for Matt Lightwinenko. And his tremendous form continues, and wasn't it a magnificent left hand, Peter Maniatis? The right it hand setting was. it up. It certainly did, Troy. The right hand set it up. You caught it beautifully, but the left... The left hook is the thing that did the damage there. Right. And in the time, two minutes, four seconds of round one. Your winner by knockout, Matt Light Winenko. Matt Light Winenko, a boxer with massive upside. Plenty of promise. Matt, have a three cheers for Matt. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. The big left hand did the damage.
is referee Tony Gray to give referee's instructions on the end of championship time. I'd like, I'd like to welcome fight fans all around Australia. The culmination of the Australian Fight Series Grand Final. It's about to happen. Scores will be settled. The combatants, Tim Hunt up against Ravan Caesar. It's going to be 10 rounds of absolute agony. For the vacant IBO Asia Pacific Welterweight title, Troy Zantuck in commentary alongside four time, that's right, four time Victorian promoter of the year, Peter Maniatis. Great to have you on board, Pete. Good to be here, Troy, and we've followed this series all around Australia. Now the two final combatants are here, Tim Hunt and Reva Suzanne. It's going to be a great fight. Oh, looking forward to it. The capacity crowd at the Grand Star Receptions, Altona. Absolutely, they will lap this up. They've come to see two of the very finest in Australia and a lot up for grabs, as we said, the vacant IBO, Asia Pacific welterweight title, the culmination of the Australia Fight Series. Tim Hunt, for the viewers at home, in the white trunks with the black piping, Ravan Caesar, the black trunks with the silver and red lettering emblazoned on them. And the fighters are fighting with click go raise gloves, Troy. They're the punchers' gloves, and they're the gloves that, you, that get used at world title fights in Vegas. Tim Hunt, 24 years of age, up against Ravan Caesar, 30 years of age. Caesar on a six fight winning streak. He's come up across the likes of Todd Kidd, Jason Kanofsky, Brad Hemming, Don McNabney, Stephen Maxwell, and Faisal Fayad. A tremendous string of wins for Ravan Caesar, and he's trained by legendary trainer John Sheeter in the kickboxing and the boxing world. Tim Hunt, under the tutelage of the great man himself, Mr. Boxing Fit, Mick Hargraves. So this promises to be an absolute corker for the fight fans at Altona North. Plenty of action here, Troy. Some heavy body work done by both fighters there. Both fighters going downstairs in this first round. Tim Hunt, 14 fights, 12 wins, four by way of KO and the two losses. Ruvan Caesar, 12 fights, nine wins, three inside the distance, and three losses. Box ahead, boys, box ahead. This has been a fast start, Troy. Both guys have thrown the filling out process out the window. Both fighters in peak physical condition for this fight. Well, why wouldn't they be? This is high stakes poker, no doubt about it. Filling out process is over, Troy. It's well and truly over. And it's a very far... Oh, nice left hook from Hunt. Probably the... Again! Hunt, the money punch, a left hook. And again. Tag. Caesar with two left hooks. Two tremendous left hooks that really... Let Rivan Caesar take notice. Let's go no hunt the round, Troy. Wow, what a round. The first round. High stakes, welterweight title, the IBO. Vacant welterweight title up for grabs. Tim Hunt up against Ravan Caesar. Round two, grand final, the Australian Fight Series. And the vacant IBO, Asia Pacific welterweight title up for grabs. Tim Hunt on an amazing winning streak. Alex Artong, Mick Shaw, Matthew Pauly, Aswin Kibai, Junmar Dunlop and Jean-Claude are some of the fighters that Tim Hunt has put away. Lovely left hand there by Ravan Caesar, the left jab. The crowd in anticipation for the pyrotechnics that are going to take place. How did you see the first round, Peter yeah. Many Artists? It's Get a back. fast start round. I thought Tim Hunt landed those left hooks at the end of the round, stole in the round, Troy. 10-9 for my Tim Hunt. Oh, 
Oh, this is starting to be a war, Troy. The crowd, they're absolutely lapping this up as both fighters unload some heavy artillery. Oh, Hunt they're playing for keeps, Troy. Tim Hunt, the golden boy from Boxing Fit Jim, he's putting it on the line up against Caesar Raban, the tough Western Suburbs Cameroon slugger. Oh, this is living up to me. All that it promised, no doubt about it. Hope you're enjoying it, fight fans around Australia on Fox Aurora. This could be one for the ages, scheduled to go 10 rounds. Can they keep this pace up for 10 rounds, Troy? Oh, wow, I don't feel, wow. Frenetic pace in the first one and a half rounds of this bout. Caesar finding his range in this round, Peter. He is, and it's uh, Tim Hunt firing back though, Troy. Clubbing left hand by Ravan Caesar, but Tim Hunt. The counter punch in his arsenal. There is no mistake about it. Tim Hunt, of course, a strong team with his father, Gary, at the Victoria Market, Troy, and all the boys there. Always a big cheerio for Gary Hunt. Um, yeah, the uh, poultry and, and service. Yeah, the Hunt family synonymous with the Victoria Market. Hoping his son can take away that vacant IBO welterweight title. He's up against some stiff competition tonight. Make no mistake about it in Ravan Caesar. A man born in Cameroon, now residing in Australia. You can't take your eyes off the combatants at any stage, Troy. They are, they are speedsters out there. Oh, there you go. The end of round two. What a round it was. Caesar up against Hunt. Round three, welterweight title, the IBO vacant, welterweight title up for grabs. The Australian Fight Series put on by promoter Adam Wilcock doing tremendous work in the boxing community. The place to be is Grand Star Receptions, Altona North. The two pugilists, Tim Hunt up against Ravan Caesar. How have you saw the first two rounds, Peter Maniatis? Those have been a great contest from both boxers, Troy. We've seen Reuben Suzanne, he's, he's shown us his blinding speed and counter punching. But Tim Hunt, he has fought the best he possibly can fight. He's had some big shots, some solid left hooks. This fight's up for grabs. Ten rounds. Third man in the ring, Tony Moretta, referee, says box on. And that's certainly what they've done. The Hunter, Tim Hunt, up against Hale, Ravan Caesar. Hale Caesar, up against the Hunter. Two tremendous nicknames. As Hunt goes on the offensive, backing Caesar into the corner, and the mouth guards come out. The mouth guard has come out. Tony that Marita. was toe to toe action, Troy. Tony Marita handing it to Mick Hargraves, the trainer of Tim Hunt. Fistic Fury toe to toe action here, Troy. Make no mistake about wow. that. Wow. It's been a frenetic pace today, Peter Maniatis. Stamina will definitely come into this over 10 rounds. Both fighters in physical, absolute peak physical condition. To see the finale here of the fighter series at the Waterweight division. Two of the best right in front of us now, Troy. No doubt about it. And it's been a pleasure commentating with yourself, Troy, and you do fantastic work, by the way, on SCN, mate, on Tuesday nights and Wednesday nights. I'm a big fan and listen in all the time, GBU crew. Whoa! Thanks very much for those kind words, Peter Maniatis. Oh, a big nice right hand, hand there by Tim Hunt. And a left hand coming back from A headbutt, a headbutt. There was a headbutt there, Troy. Hunt's been cut. The left. I saw that close. Wow, the left eye of Tim Hunt. Oh, and a oh. big right hand by Caesar on the counter punch. Wow, we. Right on the cut. This has turned the fight around, Troy. The separation punch from Root. 
Cesar Rivera, an enormous right hand. And that's opened up Tim Hunt. The corner of Tim Hunt, Mick Hargraves, is already getting the adrenaline ready. That will be going straight on the cut, adrenaline 500. And wow, there was a round. Cesar Ravan, what a round. Tim Hunt getting that left eye seen to. What a tremendous round. What a tremendous fight it's been. Troy, we're three rounds into the fight, and that's just changed the lopsided the fight. Tim Hunt getting cut there by an accidental head clash. Gee, it's up for grabs now, isn't it? Amazing scenes here at uh, the Grand Star Receptions, Altona. It's all up for grabs. The vacant IBO welterweight title up for grabs. Tim Hunt come out very hard in the first two rounds, but Roman Caesar, that third round was absolutely sensational. Opening up Tim Hunt with a massive right hand, separation punch. Round four of this welterweight stoush. I'm joined by four-time Victorian promoter of the year and host of Channel 31 KO Boxing, Peter Maniatis. Oh, has it been a rip snorter to date? We've had everything here now, Troy. We've had two speeds going for it. We've had cuts. We've had solid power shots landed. I just think this fight could be the making of fight of the year. Tim Hunt needs to compose himself. After that rollicking right hand from Caesar, it was laden with Tabasco, make no mistake about it. But Tim Hunt, as we've seen in previous fights, intestinal fortitude, 10 out of 10. He's not only a speedster, Tim Hunt, he's a brave fighter too. He's a gutsy fighter. And look at him digging deep here. This is toe to toe, Troy. Tim Hunt finding, he's finding something. He's going on the offensive. He's trying to box Revan Caesar into a corner, but Caesar having none of it. They're exchanging right hands, Troy. An amazing exchange, Pete, of, of right overhand rights by both fighters. Ravan trying to set up that big right hand with a left hand jab. Tony Moretta warning Caesar, no pushing. The boxing fit corner have done great work with Tim Hunt's cut. He's not bleeding there. That's fantastic work by the cornerman at boxing fit gym to stop Tim Hunt's cuts. No doubt about it, Pete. Still bouncing on the feet. Is the hunter Tim Hunt just looking for that opening? Will it come? This is what professional boxing is all about, Peter Maniatis. It has been blow for blow, toe to toe, no doubt about it. Here we go, Troy. They're both going toe to toe again. Both guys willing to back their speed. As Ravan goes to the bread basket of Hunt. Trying to work the body, then come over the top with the temple tickler. This has had more and more, Troy. It just keeps getting better and better, this fight. There's had turns, we've had cuts, we've had gunslinging action. And both boys give it hundred percent. Absolutely. Well said, Peter. In the round four. Very close round, very hard to score. But Tim Hunt, great to see him regaining his composure. <laughs> round five, Tim Hunt up against Ravan Caesar. It's all up for grabs. The vacant IBO welterweight title. The Australian Fight Series Grand Final. The culmination of a tremendous fight series. And the two, the best, are in the ring. Caesar up against Hunt. And it's been an absolute slobber knocker fest that has had the crowd at Grand Star Receptions on their feet. Peter Maniatis. It's had everything, Troy. You're spot on there, mate. And it's just, 
it's testament to both fighters because you've seen them through the fighter series a whole year and they've been the two standout fighters apart from Todd Kidd who had to withdraw through injury so we're, we're seeing the best of the best here and they're both just going for it they know a lot's on the line and uh, they're just making sure they, they don't do anything stupid but when they let their punches go if you notice they're letting four and five punches go and that's a sign of good fighter and Tim Hunt's a good fighter so is Reba Suzanne make no mistake about that and the fight fans certainly getting their money's worth tonight. As both fighters have uh, Mike, Mike. exchanged more than the, the Dow Jones index tonight. That's been sensational. As Hunt throwing out that left jab, trying to work the overhand right, the money punch of Tim Hunt. Caesar trying to upset the rhythm of Hunt, but he comes and he unloads on Caesar with a flurry of left hands in this the corner. This is toe-to-toe, -to -toe, Troy. But Caesar's evasive skills coming to the fore. Tremendous evasive work there by Caesar. A flurry of punches there by Tim Hunt. Brought the crowd to its feet. Oh, oh. we've got a live one here, Peter. Tim Hunt slipping under a wild left hand there by Caesar. The Cameroon Olympians, Revan Caesar, who came here in 2006 with the Commonwealth Games, called Melbourne his home, now looking at an IBO title and being the finalist and winner of the fighter series. Under the tutelage of John Sheeda, legendary Western suburbs kickboxing and boxing trainer. He's up against Tim Hunt, who's under the ring ship of the great man, Mick Cargroves from Boxing Fifth Germans. Hunt coming on, looking to box. Revan Caesar into a corner, but wow, the evasive skills, as I've said, ad nauseum. Now you see me, now you don't. Movements here from Revan Suzanne. Oh, and there's another tremendous round, Peter. A big round there, Troy. Thank you. Walk the corner, please. Walk the corner. Walk the corner, Nick. Box. Round six. Oh, boy, what a fight this has been so far. The Australian Fight Series Grand Final. The two combatants. The pugilistic precision that's been shown by the hunter Tim Hunt and Hail Caesar Ravan. Peter Maniartis in commentary alongside Troy Zantuck. Troy, the second part of the fight here. The first half we saw maybe, you know, uh, both fighters have been sentenced at certain times of the fight. I thought when Tim Hunt got cut, it swayed the sentence to Reuben Suzanne, but Hunt came back and he showed his toughness. So as we said, it's a six round, it's still up for grabs. It's going to be a grand stand finish, Troy. Oh, is it going to be a grand stand finish as Hunt with a left and a right hand combination? Wakey, wakey, Caesar Avant. Both fighters have gone out like. Uh, Usain Bolt, tremendous hand speed, evasive skills, hard punching, great body shots. This fight's had it all, Peter. It certainly has, Troy. One thing I've noticed here, both fighters got respect for each other. And they, they acknowledge each other and they know each other's got very good accuracy and they, they punch well. So it's, uh, it's been fought in good sportsmanship. No doubt about it, Pete. But as you said, both fighters very respectful of each other. And as we know in the fight game, your hands are down. You're only one punch away from oblivion. This type of fight's already got rematch written all over it. Troy. Oh, has it? What? Fight fans at the uh, Grand Star receptions in Altona North hoping this fight goes the 10 rounds. Schedule for 10. Hunt with a beautiful, a crisp left hand of the jaw of Reuben Cesare. 
as he unloads. That was a big body shot landed by Hunt. A real rib tickler there landed by the Hunter Tim Hunt. Certainly caught the attention of Caesar. And that's the ploy. Troy Rubens just hands hard to hit to the head because he's always moving his head, but the body doesn't move. So Hunt's got to log those body shots in and try and slow him down. Interesting style, isn't it, uh, Rivan Caesar? As you said, that Floyd Mayweather type style where he has the hands down. Yeah, I don't think Hunt's going to have his hands down after what Floyd Mayweather did towards this. Round six, Peter Maniatis, what a fight it's been. It's been hard to score, hasn't it, Troy? Very hard, but uh, Troy, six rounds already in the bag. It's been a hard fight to score. Both boxers have had their moments. Tim Hunt got cut. We saw the cut swell, but now he's starting to come back into the fight. Yeah, absolutely, Peter. I thought Tim Hunt in that particular round was absolutely back in it. No mistake about it. The cut healing beautifully. The Hargraves camp have got to be happy. He's got his composure back. Let's hope this goes the schedule 10. <laughs> Second round, round seven. Get there he goes, Ash Get. Get. Round seven, Troy Zantuck in commentary with Peter Maniatis, host of Channel 31's KO Boxing Show. I tell you what, Pete, this is this could have fire of the year written all over it. I think there's even rematch here written all over it too, Troy. And as we said, it's high stakes. Make no mistake about it. The IBO Asia Pacific welterweight title up for grabs. Caesar on a six fight winning streak, looking to extend it to seven. Tim Hunt's going to have something to say about it. Caesar goes downstairs and upstairs, left to right hand. Caesar, trained by John Sheeter. Cold figure in the western suburbs, Johnny Sheeter, Troy. No doubt about it. A legend in, in the kick, kickboxing circles also. And of course, Tim Hunt, under the tutelage of Mr. Boxing Fit himself, Michael Hargraves. Some heavy body punches there by Tim Hunt to Cesare's bread basket, Peter. It, it certainly was, and it brought the crowd to its feet. The Hunt crowd love it when he goes to the body, Troy. Mick Hargraves' son, Champ, also won the competition, best and fairest, Troy. And uh, congratulations to Chan. He, uh, that's a big feat to win a competition, best and fairest. Absolutely, Peter. As Tim Hunt heads to the neutral corner. Cesare to the neutral corner, and it's time to start boxing again. It certainly is. That's the second time the mouth guards come out. Well, vicious, vicious left hand body punch there by Hunt. Right, step back. Step back, Hunt. Step back, clean, both guys in supreme physical condition. They are primed to go the 10 rounds, Troy. Make no mistake about that. The thing I like about both boxers, Peter, they're both wonderfully balanced, aren't they? They're they are. on their feet, dexterous, and they have great lateral movement. They're thinking man's boxers too, Peter, aren't they? They really think out their strategy. There's there's no room for sloppiness in the repertoire of Hunt and Caesar. And Suzanne Caesar, he's a counter puncher. Hunt's not letting him get off on his counter punching. Hunt's getting in there, throwing his shots, and making sure he doesn't get countered. The conclusion of round seven. Been a tremendous exhibition of boxing here at the Grand Star Reception Centre in Altoona North. Victoria. Second round, 
round eight action coming to you from Grand Star Receptions, Alterna North and Adam Wilcock promotion, the fight card promotions doing wonderful work. And here we have the IBO, wild away title up for grabs. The Hunter, Tim Hunt. Through the, whole, through the whole, sorry to interrupt, Troy, through the whole series, I've just been impressed with the way the fighters have conducted themselves. And here in the final, they've just been terrific sportsmen, haven't they? Couldn't have said it better myself, Pete. You can interrupt me any time with comments like that. This is here, goes downstairs, looked a bit Tasmanianish to me, a bit low. Hunt, to me now, has to get busier, Troy. He doesn't want the fight to slip away. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you, Pete. He needs to step it up a cog, does the hunter. Suzanne is starting to look a bit fresher to me. I'm trying to unload those body shots. It's been the money punch for him tonight, Troy. The left hook and the body shots. Yeah, no doubt about it, Pete. Cesare throws out the right hand. Keeps his hands lower than most uh, most fighters does Ravan Caesar. The cut's opened up again, Croy. This is bad news. I don't know if it's a new cut or if it's the old cut just reopened, but it's opened up again. Now bleeding into the left eye of Tim Hunt. And that can't be good. That would impair Tim Hunt's vision. It would impair the right hand, Troy. Of breathing Suzanne when he throws it. And no doubt, Suzanne seeing the blood, the trickle of the blood from the left eye. He'd be homing in on that, making it a target. A beautiful body punching there by Tim Hunt, scoring punches. More body shots. Tim Hunt starting to come on strong. Some ribcage rattlers from the Hunter. Will they be enough to rattle Hail Caesar of Van? 30 seconds to go in this round. As the chant of Caesar goes up. Hunt. Oh, Hunt's resilient, Troy. Oh, he's digging deep, the Hunter. Cesare weathering, weathering the storm. Tags Hunt with the right hand. And Cesare said, come on, Hunt doesn't need to come on. He's been coming on all night. Oh, what a round. What a fight. What a weight title. IBO up for grabs. Sheep stations are plenty. Wow, we. It's had everything, Troy. It certainly has been in many artists. What a great fight it's been. Okay. Round nine. Round nine. You certainly don't want to miss these last two rounds. It's been sensational boxing. Masterclass boxing from the Hunter Tim Hunt and Ravan Caesar. Yours across Australia have been treated to a treat here tonight, Troy. If the viewers watching on Fox Tell Aurora would be absolutely lapping this welterweight title fight up. This is high quality boxing, make no mistake about that. This is world class. Cesare throwing a wild left hand, trying to set up the overhand right. Finds fresh air, Hunt looking to come on strong. He needs to these last two rounds. Mike! Mike, now hold it. Say good morning. Moretta. Warning, Ravan for holding, doing a tremendous job. Tony Moretta, one of the most experienced referees in Australia. And he's being treated to the best seat in the house. Break, 
Hunt being urged on by his charges in the Hargraves corner, the boxing fit corner. Watch that shoulder. Watch that shoulder. Moretta warning Hunt about the elbow. The bleeding seems to have subsided from the left eye of Tim Hunt, which is a good sign. Been impressed with the attitude and character, as I keep saying for both right, fighters. The fought in great spirit and the fought in the name of boxing. This has been a real good Peter con contest. Absolutely, Peter. It's been an absolute credit to both boxers, the way they've conducted themselves and the fight skills that they've brought to the ring tonight. Holy guacamole! Caesar urging Hunt to throw some more. Some serious leather exchange there, Peter. It was, Troy, and uh, Hunt just making sure he doesn't get countered because Caesar loves to counter once uh, one Hunt finishes his punches, and Tim's very aware of that, and he's making sure that he doesn't stray where he can be countered. He has animated before both fighters' strategies. They certainly know their way around a boxing ring. Hargraves urging Hunt to finish it off. Urging him to come home strong. Caesar throwing some tremendous left and right hand combinations. Very hard for Hunt to penetrate that impenetrable fortress at the moment. Round, of boxing oh, no. round nine, one round to go of this absolute epic. Hold on to your hats, stick around. This has been absolutely absorbing this fight, Peter Maniatis. It's had everything for you. Last round, Troy, the fight's up for grabs. This has been a cracker. Oh, it's been fight of the year stuff, make no mistake about it, Peter Maniatis. Hunt and Cesare, absolutely a masterclass in welterweight boxing. Final round! The tenth and final round. Both fighters touch gloves. A wonderful show of sportsmanship. But this is the money round. This is where the score is settled. Tim Hunt up against Ravan Cesare. What are we expecting in the last round, Peter Maniard? If we were playing poker, Troy, all the chips go on the table right now. It's up for grabs. Whoever wants it gets to win the golden belt. Oh, <laughs> the IBO. Well to wait, title up for grabs. Both boxers, make no mistake about it, they'll be leaving nothing in that ring. As Cesare throws out the left hook, Hunt coming on strong. The crowd absolutely mesmerised by this welterweight slugfest between Tim Hunt and Ravan Caesar. Hunt's walked up all night and landed the strong body shots. He's made the fight. Ruben Cezanne, the gun singer, he's counterpunched beautifully as well. It's turned out to be Styles make fights, Troy, and this has been a great cracking fight. Now the dance starts. Conservation of energy, but now the leather. The leather will be landed. As Cesare goes on the counter attack. Hunt coming forward. Coming through the front door. As Cesare does a bit of showboating, putting the hands up saying, come and get me. He will, Troy. This is a final round of the fighter series. It's up for grabs. Let's see who's going to finish strongest. Cesare, the hands down. Susceptible to a big right hand. Cesare. Hunt, Hunt needs to get busy. Showboating with the hands down. That, this could spell danger. Fight, 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 
Moretta separating both boxes. They touch gloves. Moving into the final stages of the last round, Troy. The last minute. This has been a cracker. Revanche Caesar. I think he might be auditioning for the next episode of Dancing with the Stars. He's doing a wonderful job. The evasive skills of Cesare have been sensational as Hunt goes on the attack. A very hard target to hit has been Revanche Caesar. Tim Hunt again bleeding from that left eye. This has been a hard fight to score, Troy. Both fighters have had their moments and both fighters have got strong cases and how they should have won the fight. Yeah, no doubt about it. Special comments from Peter Maniatis as this fight draws to its conclusion. And there it is. Both wow. fighters with their hands, Troy. What a fight. Fight of the year material. Ravan Caesar and the hunter Tim Hunt take of our both fighters the capacity crowd here at the grand star receptions on their feet in appreciation absolutely lapping it up too close to call peter maniatis will go to our master of ceremonies hollywood howard lee for the official decision i can't wait Judge, Judge Henry Nissen had 97-96 Cesare. Judge Brian Memory he had it the other way. He had Hunt 98-95 Cesare. The final card, the final card for the IBO Asia Pacific Championship. Andrew Campbell had it 98. 92, your new champ, Ravan Cesare. <laughs> okay, the championship belt, Ravan all hail Cesare. Stephen uh, affixed the championship belt. So we have a split decision and uh, how about three cheers for Ravan? Hip hip? Hip hip? Hip hip? Congratulations Ravan. It's a very tough fight but you get a still well done. Okay, one of our championship fights. 
the new IPO Pacific Champion. Thank you, uh, Steve and Adam. Ravan, all hail after the great ACDC track, which Ryan likes, and Lu Chen. Here tonight, a great international fight at the Grand Star Stadium. We'll be back in five minutes for our Women's World Championship, WIBA in Paris. I need to sleep. Okay, when you welcome the challenger from Brooklyn, Australia. Lady Guy Brown. as his first World Championship fight in the Grand Star Stadium, Alan Turner and Paris Productions, the Australian Fight Series. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, from the site where legends are made in the Grand Star Stadium, are you ready to rock? Are you ready to box? We talk that talk, but can you walk that walk? She will. She is still, and now it's time to face the music. Your supervisor from Florida, USA, Mr. Ryan Wissow. Your time to the medalist, World Championship fight, Damien Nimry. Your ringside physician, Dr. Peter Lang. Your provider, Anna Wilcock, fight card promotions. Ten rounds of boxing for the WIBA Women's Super Featherweight Championship of the world. Would you welcome first on my left, wearing black trunks with a touch of white, Hollywood Mag Pike Ellis, the challenger from Brooklyn Bridge, Australia. Nine fights, eight wins, six inside lizards, dubbed the mini Jeff Fennick at 58.40 kilograms, holder of three professional women's championships, WBA Pepper and WIBA in Australian Championship. Ladies and gentlemen, proudly representing Australia, the challenger, Lady Di <laughs> And across the ring, the reigning and defending champion, Oshawa, Ontario, Canada, head coach, Rick Sticky Lapache and Don Nelson. 11 professional fights, 7 wins, 3 losses, 1 draw. 3 by knockout, wearing black trunks with a touch of shock pink and white. She won this World Championship in November 19 last year against Helena Mutjinovic in Alberta, Canada. This young lady has fought in New York twice, New Mexico, and the famous Mohican Sun. 
Casino in Connecticut, USA. At 58.10 kilograms, the reigning and defending WIBA Women's Super Featherweight Champion of the World, Canada's Lethal Lindsay Garbag. His referee Tony Moretta from Australia to give referees instructions. It's all yours, Tony. Both ladies from the center ring. Okay, ladies, this is a quarter of five, ten rounds. I gave you instructions with the referee group. I made my instructions at all times. Defend yourself at all times. Okay? Touch gloves. Make your corner. Come out of the bell. Well, what a night of fight it's been. It has been a sensational night of fight at the Grand Star Altona Receptions, Victoria, Australia. Sensational night of fight, and it's only going to get better with Di Prazak up against lethal Lindsay Garbett, all the way from Canada. Peter Maniatis in commentary, four-time Victorian promoter of the year. Peter, great to have you on board. The first thing I'm not as here, Troy, both girls are very similar builds, very similar stance, very similar height. It's going to be a very, very close contest. You can see that. And the WIBA Super Featherweight World title up for grabs in the 58.9 kilogram class. Troy Zantuck in commentary. Master promoter Peter Maniatis on hand as Di Prazak unloads some big right hands there on lethal Lindsay Agaba. Oh, oh Garbutt! Nails her! Garbutt has come out with a big one, a barreling right hand. This is the first time prazak has been down in her career, Troy. Taking the standing count. The first round, she got caught off balance. This is Di Prazak's big test up against a quality opponent in lethal Lindsay Garbutt from Canada, Ontario. Wow, that was a rollicking right hand there. Lindsay Garbutt, Troy, she told me during the interview that she's an armed guard back in Toronto, Canada. So uh, she needs to be armed here tonight up against Di Prazak, who's just, been down in the first round, mind you. Just for the viewers at home, Di Prazak in the black and white trunks, Garbutt in the black and pink, and they're going hell for leather. Heated exchange in this first round between both women. This is for the Wibber World Title, Troy, the Junior Lightweight World Title. Everything is up for grabs. Di Prazak tonight, the girl that walked in at 90 kilo of Boxing Fit Gym, tonight gets the fight for a World Title, Troy. And what a first round there. Di Prazak being put on the canvas by Garvin. But that could be a wake-up call for Di Prazak. Wow, Troy, what a first round. Who would expect the Di to go down in the first round? Amazing. Garvin coming out, all guns blazing, hitting Di Prazak when she was unbalanced. That was the key, Peter. Perfect. Round two action. The WIBA Super Featherweight World Women's title up for grabs. Di Prazak, the black and white trunks up against Lethal Lindsay Garbutt from Ontario, Canada in the black and pink. And Prazak is coming out on the attack. Garbutt with that heavy overhand right. Prazak's coming at all guns blazing, Troy. Both women heavy handed. Both females fighting in a boxing fit gloves too. This is the ultimate acid test for Di Prazak. If she can overcome Garbutt, it certainly puts her on the world stage. Prazak coming off an eight fight winning streak, if you don't mind. From Ontario, Canada, which is closer to Rento foot. Toe to toe action here. Garbutt coming back. Very well with the counter punch. Tonight's bout proudly sponsored by Mad Recruitment as Di Prazak bleeding from the nose, Peter Maniatis. 
Yes, Lindsay Garbutt, Troy, she's been everything we've expected and more. She is tough and she needs to be tough because Prazak, when she goes on the attack, she fights like 10 men. Absolutely a world-class opponent, Garbutt. She's got a very heavy overhand right as the blood streams from the nose of Di Prazak. Prazak's got to settle here. She's getting hit with shots she shouldn't be getting hit with and starting to lose a bit of steam and momentum. Gets caught with another right hand. Wobbles to the corner, Troy. Big bad signs here for Di Prazak. Round three. Round three and welcome to boxing fans around Australia. The first two rounds of this do or die bout between Di Prazak and Lindsay Garbutt have been sensational. She's getting caught by the right hand over the jab, Troy. Yeah, the overhand right, Pete. It's, uh, it's straight over damage. Di's jab. So Di's got to start now waiting. She can't be getting countered by those right hands because it's starting to take its toll. And Garbutt seems to be taking the ascendancy. Nice hook by Prazak. Di needs to get on the Prazak attack, which she's famous for. We're seeing a world-class fighter here, Troy and Lindsay Garbutt. Make no mistake about that. She is world-class. There is no doubt about it. And got that steely stare about her too. Loves it in close. Loves it tough. And doesn't mind to get dirty, Troy. Both women love it in the clinches, Pete. Doi Prazak, as we say that, walking forward, being brave. Perfurously bleeding from the nose. She's been a beaten fighter here tonight. She got dropped in the first round, wobbled in the second, and now just trying to do her best. But nobody can question Doi Prazak's intestinal fortitude, and that has been there for all to see. Guys, just got to keep walking forward and make sure she doesn't get countered by those right hands and readjust the game plan. Guy Prazak. Beautiful separation punches from Prazak and that gets the crowd humming. Both girls now starting to wail away, Troy. Prazak throwing for dear life. Garbutt smeared in Prazak's blood. She can smell it. She can smell a win. I'm impressed with the ferocity of both girls, Troy. Their ferocity's been quite unbelievable, Peter. Oh, this is of the makings of another, dare I say it, fight of the year material. Troy, what can we say? We saw Prazak come back there in the third round. She was brave, she was tough. She was everything we expected from a boxing fit fighter. Extraordinary scenes, three rounds of absolute frenetic boxing action between Prazak and Garbutt. Garbutt, a world quality opponent, up against the eight winning, winning fight streak of Di Prazak. It's got all the hallmarks of a fight of the year. Round four, Prazak versus Garbutt. What a great fight it's been to date. Absolute non-stop action. The pugilistic skills shown by both women have been nothing short of sensational as Prazak goes on the attack. Corners. Garbutt. Garbutt holding on for dear life. Prazak coming out. All guns blazing. Peter Maniatis. Where's this come from, Troy? She's really stepped it up. I think the Hargraves corner has implored her to start landing some leather. This is a war. Make no mistake about that. These Prazak. girls are going into battle. Using the uppercut, the tremendous effect, Di Prazak. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, this is over 10 rounds. It is a war of attrition. It's a battle of stamina. And it's for the Wibber Junior Lightweight World title, Troy High Stakes. Di Prazak, the Western Suburbs girl, they breed them tough in the West. Make no mistake about that, Troy. Prazak coming on strong as Garbutt holds on. Prazak summoning all that intestinal fortitude that she's famous for. It's, she lands a massive left hand to Garbutt and it knocks Garbutt. Oh, but Garbutt comes back with the left of her own and both women separated by Moretta. Ho oh, ho! You don't mind. 
What a fight we've got on our hands, Peter. This fight has everything, Troy. In fighting, balance, hooks, it's got everything. Both girls sharp and both girls have both power in both hands. Big uppercut there from Garbutt. Oh, what a round! Sensational! The crowd clapping in appreciation. Round five of this absolute slobber knocker fest between Di Prazak and Lindsay Garbutt. Lethal Lindsay Garbutt. And what's up for grabs is the WIBA Super Featherweight World Title. I think Prazak's starting to work herself back into the fight floor. She landed big shots on Garbutt, and she's starting to wear the world champion down. Well, she certainly made Garbutt sit up and think in that previous round. Garbutt's still the bounce of the feet, which is always a good sign. Furious, frenetic boxing action coming to you from the Grand Star Receptions, Alterna North, Victoria, Australia. Canada's Lindsay Garbutt up against the hometown hero, Di Prazak. Di Prazak stalking Garbutt as she always does, coming in to find a, a off balance there, Prazak got caught. Garbutt trying to take advantage here. Dai Prazak losing her balance there. As Garbutt looks to... Oh, beautiful uppercut there by Prazak, a right hand uppercut. And again, a massive right hand uppercut by Prazak. And she's on the attack, and it's got the crowd humming. That right hand uppercut, Pete, that's, that's her money punch. It is, and as you like to call it, Troy, the Prazak attack. Wig it a wig it a whack. It's the Prazak attack. Oh, what a round. The crowd absolutely out of their seats. What a fight this has been! Round six scheduled to go ten. It is the WIBA Super Featherweight World Title. And it's up for grabs. The combatants, the pugilists, the women. Di Prazak and Lethal Lindsay Garbutt. And they have left nothing in the locker. Prazak using that uppercut to tremendous effect, a devastating effect. This has been a massive effort from Di Prazak, Troy, because she got hit early and got hurt, and she's fought her way back into the fight like a true champion. She got hit with an amazing right hand bomb, and she's come back. Her nose is bleeding, but boy, oh boy, does she like it tough as she unloads a beautiful left hand jab to the chin of Garbutt. But Garbutt will not be denied. Stop! Step back! Step back! And Di Prazak has left no stone unturned in this fight, Troy. She has hired Melissa Hernandez to come down from America to be her sparring partner in preparation for Lindsay Garbutt. That's how serious she is of winning this Wibber world title. The crowd love the style of both of these women. Prazak always coming through the front door, always knocking on that front door, looking to ring the chinny chin chin bell as she unloads. Garbutt coming back with a right hand of her own. This has been one for the ages. It right hand, has left hand uppercuts. Garbutt on the ropes. She's got to extricate herself or she's going to be in a world of hurt as Prazak is coming home with a wet sail. Both women. Oh, a massive right hand by Prazak. It's the Prazak attack. 
and she's in big trouble, Garbutt. She really felt that. Oh, what a round. The That's crowd the round of the are year, on Troy. their feet. Amazing scenes round of the year. at the old Tona North Grand Star receptions. Oh, Peter. Troy, what can we say? This fight's had everything. I thought Hagler Hearns was a big fight. This is Hagler Hearns plus three. Unbelievable scenes here. Ty Prazak, the Prazak attack, wig it a wig it a whack. She come back strong in that round and she's setting it up for a massive finish against Lethal Lindsay Garvin. Round seven. Round seven, Peter Maniatis, and I've nearly lost my voice. These first seven rounds have been something special. Unbelievable, Troy. Both girls have shown tremendous heart, tremendous power, and their fighting spirit cannot be denied. Garbutt really felt the, the true force of Di Prazak in that previous round, but Prazak must maintain the momentum. A tremendous platform that she's built, Prazak, but she can't let the world-class Garbutt get back into this fight. The hometown crowd urging Di Prazak on. Prazak's physical conditioning, training at Boxing Fit. She'll go the 10 rounds. I'll make no mistake about that, Troy. She will go the 10 rounds, no problem whatsoever. An electric atmosphere here at the Grand Star receptions as Prazak unloads again on Garbutt. But Di Prazak, she's got to be aware. She's got to give that overhand right respect because that's Garbutt's money punch. Both girls tired but just swinging away. This is where the, the conditioning starts to take its toll, Troy. Prazak's most effective when she goes the uppercut. They're the lethal punches. Both girls exhausted, fighting on heart. They're fighting on memory, Peter. Talk about fight of the year. This could well be the fight of the decade in women's boxing. And a big right hand unloaded again by Di Prazak. Ho oh, ho! What a round! If you can believe it, better than the rest. This the, is amazing, Troy. The crowd on their feet, they're lapping it up. Pandemonium broken loose at Grand Star Receptions. Second half, round eight. Round eight, scheduled to go ten. It is the WIBA Super Featherweight World title. Your combatants, your pugilists, your warriors are Di Prazak and Lindsay Garbutt. Prazak coming home like a train, Troy. The rough and tough girl from the western suburbs, she's gonna leave nothing in the tank. Make no mistake about that. The heart shown by both these fighters, quite extraordinary. And the crowd, well, I've been to a lot of boxing, boxing extravaganzas, Pete, in my time, but the absolute electric atmosphere here is something to behold. Tony Moretta, third man in the ring, doing a great job. Garbutt's right eye now swelling up, Troy. She'd have problems seeing. As Prazak unloads, right, left hand combination. Prazak going for the finish, Troy. Is the finish line inside Peter Maniatis for Di Prazak as Garbutt comes back with the left and right hand of her own. But the Tabasco's not in those hands anymore. The momentum, the shift, the swing, the pendulum. It's Di Prazak. going for the finish. Big left and right hands unloaded. Prazak, oh, she's on jelly Garbutt's legs. out on her feet, Troy. Jelly legs is Garbutt. Prazak looking to issue the finishing touches. But Garbutt won't be denied. Boxing on memory. Out on her feet, Troy. This is a war. Prazak, left and right hand, uppercut. Oh, magnificent right hand by Prazak. She's nearly out, Troy. The Prazak attack. We get a we get a whack. She's back. She hasn't left. Ho oh, ho! 
Unbelievable. What a round. We keep saying it every what round. What a round. I'll say it again. What a round. Guy Prasak. Lindsay Garbett. Oh, wow. We. Round nine. Round nine. Can it get any better? We keep saying what a round. Well, <laughs> you've got to be here to experience it. Hope you're enjoying it at home as much as we are here. It is an absolute slop burn knocker fest as Prazak goes back on that famous attack. Garbutt needs to pull something out of the fire. This has been a massive finish by Di Prazak. Di Prazak. Garbutt fighting with one eye, Troy. Her left eye is completely shut. Intestinal fortitude 101, Garbutt. No mistake about it. The Canadian, she's as tough as teeth. She's come here with her belt and she doesn't want to let it go. But I'm afraid, Troy, this tenacious girl from the western suburbs has got the world title sitting right in front of her as far as I'm concerned. She's done enough to win if she can win this last round. The confidence in Di Prazak has been gaining every round. After every overhand right, after every left uppercut, after every left hook, after every overhand right! Prazak, the momentum. Oh, it is with the girl from Australia. Can the Canadian find something? She's world class. This will definitely put Prazak on the world stage if she can overcome Garbutt. A big right hand landing there by Prazak. Another right hand. She's eating leather continuously, Garbutt. This has been relentless pursuit by Di Prazak. There it is, round nine. How did you see it, Peter? Prazak for me, Troy. Coming on strong. The Aussie girl up against the Canadian. Troy, what a fight. I've never seen a female fight like it. Prazak started slow. She was on the canvas. Now she's moved on in the gears I didn't think women had. She has been absolutely awesome here tonight. Oh, Peter, it's been unbelievable. The atmosphere here has been electric. After a first round knockdown, Di Prazak has come from the clouds. She's coming home with a wet sail. She's up against a quality opponent in Lindsay Garbutt, lethal Lindsay Garbutt. Can she pull something out of the fire in this final round? Stay tuned. Well, this Retired, Troy. We have a new world champion. Sensational scenes here. Boxing fits just got their new world champion. Pandemonium's broken loose. Failed to answer the bell. And now we've seen the team Hargraves. Wow. Team boxing fit. Peter Mattiatis. The boys have gone wild. They've got a new world champion in the building. Chaotic scenes inside the ring as Lindsay Garvin could not go on after round nine scheduled to go 10 really looking forward to the 10th and final round but it's been called off it's been declared Di Prazak is the WIBA super featherweight world title holder the girl from Australia Ryan Wislow has got the belt ready and he's going to be putting the belt around the girl from the west Waste. She's jumped on our leash. She's jumped on her <laughs> mum. Oh. She's as happy as Larry. Extraordinary scenes. Crowd as punch. Trainer Mick Hargraves. Mr. Boxing Fit. What a fight. It's got to be a nomination for Fight of the Year. No arguments from me there, Troy. This fight had everything. Unbelievable fight, it was action, 
power punches and everything that a fight can kill him once in a fight. I love you. 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 I want to talk to Lindsay, Lindsay and Lindsay, the world champ, who is in the title of the is very good in the defeat. Everyone who just died and everyone who made the world as well, an opportunity to thank everybody. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, now we're going to give you a round of applause for Gillen, defending the world champion. Linda, Lindsay, come back. Tony, before you raise the arms, what transpired at the end of round nine in Lindsay's corner? Pretty much, um, the top two rules made it, and we did go on 10 to nine, but during the fight, um, I was about to stop it. The got to have a look at it because it was basically closed. They got started on the tee, um, and then they ripped it out. So during the round, the um, doctor did come in and have a look at it, and did uh, notify me that you know, um, the, the fight was not continued. So, Dr. Bill, thank you to Ladies and gentlemen, the bounce stop at the end of round nine by Dr. P. Lang in ringside position. We congratulate the new WIPA Women's Super Featherweight Champion of the World.
incredible switch. Let's hear for nine. The world champion! We're gonna talk to Adam Mocock. Adam, Adam, come across. Adam, you put your whole life on the line. You haven't seen for since you had this fight series, and that was a combination of something special. I only was now, I mean, it all belongs to, to, uh, to me and to, to guys in the box who did it, and obviously to Diana. We did sleep at the start of the year, and that's exactly how serious she was, and she's got all right, she's, she's fantastic. But in all seriousness, if you've seen two fights, back to back, yep. it, well, honestly, the last two fights have been sensational. The next one, we've got Big George, Brian Lyons, so, Diana, champion of the world. Yep, good stuff. Okay, Ryan Wissow, photographer. <laughs> We're going to talk to Nick Hargraves. Nick, your first world champion. <laughs> How about that? Classical music, Paris Productions, welcome you to our main event, Adam Wilcock. Australian Fight Series comes to a conclusion. Saturday Night Fights. George Lons and Liz would like to thank Big Mick Loveridge from LW Marine Services and the Heritage Tavern and Restaurant in Balmary. LW Marine Maynard. Super heavyweight kickboxing. When you welcome in the blue corner wearing trunks of sea blue with red and gold from Bangkok, Thailand, Mr. Tassanui, head coach. He weighed in at 93 kilograms. He has a full Muay Thai record of 93 fights, 61 wins, 30 losses, 2 draws, 19 inside the distance. At 28 years of age, would you please welcome the Lumberjack. Look who pitch who don chai. And across the ring in the red corner from Blackburn, Victoria. But race here in El Turnanoff, attendance in Paul's College, just up the road, where his dreams of becoming a world champion first started to take shape. He weighed in tonight at a power pack, 98 kilograms, undefeated 14 bouts. Mine by way of KO, training out of definition 352 in East Doncaster, and by George Marillis.
with Stan the Man, eight times world champion in the corner. Put your hands together for Australia's most successful fighting surname, the Greek Spartan himself, George the Iron Lion Longini. There's our referee, it's Chris Anderson. Five by two minutes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is main oh, event time. It is okay, super Chris. heavyweight kickboxing action. The Iron Lion, George Longinides, up against the tie, LeCou. 93 fights, 61 wins, LeCou. George Longinides, 14 wins, 9 by way of KO, and 0 losses. The Iron Lion, up against LeCou, the tie. I'm joined by Peter Maniatis in commentary. Welcome, Peter. Troy, what can we say about George Longinides? Kickboxing rules is in the house. His brother Stan, the man, eight-time world champion. George, a world heavyweight, undefeated kickboxing champion in his own right. We have got royalty in the building right now. And this is proudly sponsored, this main event, by LW Marine Services. With Mick Loveridge at the helm, doing some wonderful work, is Mick. George Longinides has got devastating leg kicks, and he kicks well up high as well, Troy. Absolutely reminiscent, obviously, of uh, Brother Stan, as you said, eight-time, that's right, eight-time world champion, a legend, an icon of the sport. And look at in shape, George. He's dropped weight from his last fight. He looks pretty fit here. The viewers at home, George, the Iron Line, Longanides in the black and white trunks. Laku from Thailand in the electric blue with the red, yellow and navy blue piping. And Lecou better watch out because George strikes quick. He's, he's got electrifying power and uh, he knows his business, George Onganides. Scheduled to go five rounds, brought to you by Fight Card Promotions and Adam Wilcock Promotion. The place to be, Grand Star Receptions, Altona North. Our main event, the super heavyweights battle it out. George Longinides. Looking to extend that unbeaten record to 15. Up against the tough Lacau, who's had 92 fights, Troy. And they breed him tough in Thailand, make no mistake about that. 61 wins, so uh, an impressive record. Feeling our process for both kickboxers in this first round. Been a tentative start here from George. It's been a professional start, but all we uploads again. Referee Chris Sanderson, the third man in the ring. Round two, our kickboxing main event. An international contest with Waka heavyweight. World champion George Onganides and Lakao, the tough tie from Thailand, Bangkok, Thailand. Proudly sponsored by LW Marine Services. A slip there from George Longanides. As we said, Longanides, a 14 and zip professional kickboxing record. The power in those legs, they're like tree trunks. And George look at Lakao's shins, there's whelps on his shins. He has done the work and got himself in prime condition for this contest against George Longanides. Brings tremendous crowd support to uh, all these events, does the Iron Lion. One of the most popular kickboxers in Australia. Always garners great crowd support wherever he goes. As we mentioned before, Troy kickboxing royalty, the Longanides name. Oh, absolutely. Oh, big kick there from Longanides. I think Lecour might have might have not balanced. Yep. Catches it with a left. Wow. Lecou, 
Look who wanted to trade. He's on and he's jelly. ended up on jelly feet. Je absolutely, Peter. He's on jelly legs. He got caught with a big bomb there, Troy. Chris Anderson issuing the uh, the count there. Look who says he's okay to go on. But, wow. Longinini's unloaded a massive... Uh, massive Going for the there. finish here, Longinini's. Round two. Longanini's showing a big showing shot there that, 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 that brought down Lacau Troy. That was a big shot. Absolutely. Troy, this special kickboxing international contest, that's got everything. Longanini's just dropped Lacau with a massive right hand. Gee, it's going to be a big tough five rounds, isn't it, for Lacau? Absolutely. Longanini's the iron line, no doubt about it. Make no mistake about it. Known for his leg kicks, but wow, he can certainly throw his punches as well as look who evidenced in round two. Second round, round three. Round three, our super heavyweight kickboxing main event. The Iron Lion up against Lekou from Thailand. In very, Sorry, very well bit. poised, isn't he, Longanides, Troy? Well, that's you know that's his trademark. In all the all the kickboxing bouts that I've seen him in, it's been his poise, his balance, and his patience. He ticks every box. Does George Longanides? Chris Anderson explaining the Lacou. Hey, you can't hold. There's no holding. Wow. Wow, he's he's down. He's in big trouble. A big kick, he is not going to get up. He is in absolute agony. Absolute agony. Chris Anderson has waved it off. That was a big leg George, kick, Troy. That was devastating. Lacau's wow. in all sorts of trouble. He's hemorrhaging. That could be a knee reconstruction right here there and there, Troy. He is in a lot of pain. We can hear the, the ligament maybe Thailand. snap. He is in a world of hurt. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Chris Anderson's stop contest. One minute, three seconds into round three. Taking his perfect record to 15 bouts. 10 by knockout. Would you congratulate the Iron Lion, George Longinini. Okay, Adam Wilcock. This year has been an enormous year for a five card promotion. The new face, the new promoter, getting all his commitments. Big round of applause for Adam Wilcock. Five card promotion, the lovely lady, Emily. Adam uh, you must be exhausted, but the proof is in the pudding. Australia's newest world champion. Good night to you all from Silver Ring at the Grand Star Stadium. Good night to you.